Hi there, everybody. Happy April 4th. It is Thursday, 2 p.m. Eastern time, my usual um, Thursday Facebook Live time. Um, I'm just going to give you a quick heads up before we enter into today's demonstration. But the first Thursday Facebook Live of each month, I'm going to introduce you to a new 12 inch by 12 inch one sheet wonder. I'll show you how to cut the DSP. I'll have um, some different card layouts and then I'll make the cards from start to finish with you. So you'll get everything you need in this demonstration of that one sheet wonder. Um, but then in addition to that, I um, afterwards will post the uh, PDF tutorial with the One Sheet Wonder template, the card sketches, and supply lists, color photos, and directions of all of the cards I make um, in a single PDF um, that can be purchased in my online store at stampinpeace.com. There is another way to get your hands on that PDF with the templates, get card sketches, um, directions for all the cards, and that is to place a $50 order with me anytime during the month of April. So it's simple, you order $50 in product. Um, that $50 is before shipping and tax, um, but $50 in product from me, either you can call or email me your order, or you can do it in um, right online with me as your demonstrator. And then I will send that off to you by email and you'll have it as a resource to use long into the future. Um, so let's get started with today's One Sheet Wonder demonstration. I'm going to flip my camera around now. And while I'm doing that, I ask you kindly to um, please share this live video and invite others to join us for today's creative inspiration with a One Sheet Wonder. I am so excited about this demonstration. I have had this um, One Sheet Wonder created and cards made, tutorial written, everything done for several weeks now. So finally, the day is here that I'm demonstrating it. Um, if you saw my, I'll call it my, um, oh, what do you call it with movies? A movie trailer, is that what they call it when they're introducing a movie? I jumped on for a few minutes earlier today. These are the eight cards that I'm going to be making in this demonstration today. This is the Flowering Zinnia sheet of 12 by 12 DSP that I'll be using, and I'm going to show you how to cut it from start to finish, okay? Um and then I will make the eight cards with you. So I've got all of my supplies ready. I have eight card bases, eight basic white um, pieces of cardstock for the inside of my cards. And I'm also adding Blackberry Bliss and we'll be doing um, sentiments with Blackberry Bliss ink on white cardstock. So the first thing, that I want to show you with this One Sheet Wonder is how to cut the DSP. Most important part of the One Sheet Wonder, followed then by the various card layouts. So I have to put my cheat sheet here so I don't forget. So my DSP is not directional. So it doesn't matter what the top, bottom sides are. But if you have a paper that is directional, say, for example, um, I just happen to be have this one out, but this one is pretty much directional. If I were using this, I would want to turn it so the top of my directional DSP is on the left, okay? So I just want to put that in there. 
um, just in case you are choosing to use some directional paper. I'm going to start by cutting at five and a quarter inches. Okay, remember, this is non-directional paper. If your DSP is directional, you want the top of your DSP on the left. So you're gonna cut it five and a quarter inches. Then you're going to cut at four inches. And then you'll be left with a piece that is two and three quarters inches wide right there. Holly, I agree, this is gorgeous paper. The next thing we're going to do is, and I'm going to cut all the DSP first, and then we'll put the cards together. Um, and you know, if you've been around with me for a while or seen any of my one sheet wonders, I like easy one sheet wonders. I don't wanna have a gazillion pieces used to make a gazillion different cards, all right? So I try to keep things simple, I try to keep the measurements simple, and I limit the number of card sketches as well. So with that five and a quarter by 12 inch strip, I'm going to cut at four inch increments. Now these last two, one I'm going to use as is. So I'm gonna set that aside, that's for the first card I make. The second and third card I make are very similar the only thing is on one, I want to use the reverse side, okay? So there's two ways to do that. Basically, I wanna cut diagonals this way. So on one, I'm going to put the upper right corner and the bottom left corner in my cutting groove. And I'm going to just cut that in half on the diagonal, okay? I'm gonna set those aside and I'm gonna keep that visual in place so that I make sure to cut the next one correctly. I want my angle on this one to be the opposite, okay? So I want to start with the upper left corner in the cutting groove and the bottom right corner in the cutting groove. And then I'm going to put my bar down. When I am cutting small corners, I like to start cutting right on the DSP because when those corners are so small, if we try to cut into them, it is possible for your cutting blade to grab that um, DSP and kind of scrunch the corner. So this way, push your blade down right on top of the paper, slide up and slide down, and you get nice cuts without any crazy corners scrunched. Um, one thing to note right here, because I'm doing one of these, I'm using the back side, I could have put right sides together, okay? Before I cut those pieces, I could have put right sides together and cut them together, all right? But if you're kind of new to this, don't overthink it. Just stick with um, the um, template that is in that PDF tutorial that you can either purchase or get free with a $50 order this month, all right? So those are cards two and three, or four cards two and three, I should say. I'm gonna put that aside. Then I'm going to take my piece that measures four inches by 12 inches. And I'm going to cut this at three inch increments. So there's three, 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 and three. And then lastly, I have this piece that measures two and three quarter inches by 12 inches. And I'm going to cut at four inch increments, four inch increments. Jen, thanks for joining us after you just woke up on a new day in Australia. 
And now we're ready to make our and assemble our cards. So the first card is super simple. Well, they're all simple in my opinion. Whoops. So for all of my card bases, I'm using Highland Heather. Started with a piece of cardstock measuring five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter on the long side and folded in half. And each of my eight card bases will have a basic white cardstock inside that measures four inches by five and a quarter. Now here's that first piece of DSP from my One Sheet Wonder. And it measures four inches by five and a quarter. And I'm gonna put it on just like that. I have a one inch by four and a quarter inch piece of white that I'll be using for my sentiment. I'm going to banner punch each end. By the way, the banner punch is retiring. Oh, if you don't have it, I highly suggest it. It is awesome. It's one of my go-to um, punches. So while I'll probably still use it, I will miss demonstrating with it. But it is, it is very awesome. And it accommodates strips of any length with a width of half inch, three quarter inch, or one inch. So now I'm just going to stamp my sentiment. And when this sentiment, in case you're wondering, comes from the Simply Zinnia stamp set, okay, has a great um, die set plus an embossing folder that coordinates with it. But I'm using these three sentiments all from the Simply Zinnia stamp set today. And then I will add this to my card front with a couple of dimensionals, just like that. How quick and easy is that? And I'm not going to add my embellishments until I've completed all eight cards and I'll do all of the embellishments at once. Okay, so card one, or and that's with one card layout. For this next one, I'm actually going to make two cards at once. So here are the two four inch by five and a quarter inch pieces of DSP that we cut on the diagonal in opposite directions. So get my two card base, Highland Heather card bases ready. Got my white cardstock for the inside of each. By the way, cardstock prices are going up in the new catalog, um, just so that you are aware of that. So I actually stocked up on white cardstock and white envelopes before the price increase comes on May 1st. So if you're a thrifty shopper like me, um, you may want to do that as well. All right, now what I'm going to do is flip over the pieces from that second set of DSP. And I'm just going to swap them out so that each of my cards will now have um, a card front with the floral zinnia side and one with that, I'll say check pattern on the back. So because we use the back side of the DSP on a few of these cards, when you're picking your 
DSP to use with this One Sheet Wonder, you're going to want to pick a DSP where you like both sides and where they coordinate and look um, look good together. Um, Noreen, I don't know that this DSP is out of stock. It is from the online exclusives. It was not in a catalog. Um, I have not heard that they're discontinuing it anytime soon. I know it's been very popular um, and was out of stock for a time and then came right back. So I can look that up afterwards. Or even at the end. Okay, oh, Kathy Viverk is on, and she's saying it doesn't show that it's out of stock. But if you were looking for it in a catalog, it's not in any catalog. It is in the online exclusives only, okay? Oops, I didn't get that first one quite right. There we go. Okay, now... For the sentiment for these cards, I'm going to do the very same thing as my first card. Again, I have strips of white that measure one inch by four and a quarter, and I'm banner punching each end. And once again, I will stamp using Blackberry Bliss ink using this gratitude sentiment from the Simply Zinnia stamp set. Oh, I didn't. Let me try that again. My pressure was not even. And that's a little better. All right. And I will add these to the card fronts with a couple of embellishments. And on one of them, I'm going to put the sentiment towards the bottom. And the other one, I'm going to put the sentiment more towards the, the top. Jen, you are right. That banner punch saves so much time. You will use it over and over. And I like, I probably use this end a little bit more, but I do like this one just as well. And in fact, I'm using it on the last set of cards today. So there's those. And again, I will add um, the embellishments on all of the cards at the very end. Okay, next I'm doing another card layout. And this, with this card layout, once again, I'll be making two cards. So I've got my Highland Heather card bases, my basic white for the inside. Remember, if you're wanting a stamped image or sentiment on the inside of your card, you want to stamp that before you adhere it to the inside. That way, if you make a mistake or it's not straight or whatever, you can simply flip that cardstock over, try again, and then adhere it to the inside of your card. 
Kathy, thank you for clarifying that. Um, the sweet, the, the Zinnia sweet is not available to order with that um, sweet item number because the shiny sequins are out. But you can um, order the bundle and the DSP separately. Kathy, thank you very much for telling everybody that. Okay, and next I have some Blackberry Bliss pieces that are cut to five and a quarter by four inches. So the same as the basic white on the inside of the cards. And I'm going to add this to my card front. Blackberry Bliss is so dark that I don't know if I would have thought on my own to put it with Highland Heather. Um, but that's what happens with the great DSPs. We get so many good color combinations. Um, did you know that on the um, back of the DSP packages, they list all of the colors in that DSP, all right, under the name of the DSP. So that helps with color combinations. And then I also use my um, Stampin' Up! Color Coach cards, which you can find these on my blog stampinpiece.com um, and I will be posting the cards with the newest set of in colors as well and then lastly oh I got these two piles mixed up here I think it's these so then we had cut four from our oops do I have the right thing here from our one sheet wonder we had cut four pieces that measure three inch by four inches Two of these I'm going to flip over and I'm going to use one of the back purple or uh, printed side and one floral side for each of these cards. And so I'm going to go ahead and put some adhesive on each of those. And then for this card, card layout, I'm going to angle each of these pieces of DSP. Just adds a little something. I'm going to go a little higher here. Adds a little something different. Adds a little more interest, I think. Okay, and I'll do the same thing with the other two pieces of DSP. So I'm using one backside and one front side or floral side. And again, I'm angling these. Now you could play with these. You can angle them like I am. You could do something like this. Um, you could even go like that. So there's different ways to um, use these pieces, but for my demonstration, um, this is the card layout or card sketch that I'm using or card template whatever you want to call it and this time I'm going to switch up my sentiment and it says sending flowers and thinking of you sending flowers and thinking of you I'm going to stamp with blackberry bliss ink again These are just half inch strips, okay? Half inch by four and a quarter. And this time I'm not going to banner cut. I'm just going to angle cut these. So I'm gonna do it, whoops, my hands are real jittery been having these tremors lately. I'm supposed to see somebody next month about, about these tremors and is, if there's anything, uh, what's causing them and what, if anything, I can do about them. Just one more thing in my list of health issues. Oh, but, you know, I'm here and doing productive things and I'm just trying to look on the bright side when all these things are coming up. 
So did you see what I did there? I took the piece that I cut off from the one angle, I flipped it to the other side, and then used that as my guide so that both um, ends are cut at the same angle. One's not, you know, they're both even. One's not more straight or more angled than the other. And I'll do the same thing here. Cut at an angle and then take that piece, put it on the other end, basically approximately where you want it. And then I just use that as, oh, I'm gonna go a little closer. I actually smeared that ass a bit. I'm gonna go a little closer and then I'm just putting the blade of my paper snips right there against that. And that's my guide and a quick and easy way to um, get even angled cuts. And what happened, here they are. I was gonna say, what happened to my dimensionals? Even when I'm not live, I am constantly misplacing my dimensionals and I have no idea why, because all my adhesives are right here to the right. But it's like when I'm using them as I'm creating, I use them this way and I set the pack down on my left. No, Mary, come on. But I, what, you know, I can't break that habit for some reason. Ugh. Anyways, okay. And then I'm just going to set this sentiment at an angle also. Um, and I'm basically going the same angle as the white or uh, the uh, floral DSP. So the white strip and the floral DSP are kind of set at that same angle. Jen, yes, the answer to that question is yes. Okay. I also, when I'm making a lot of cards and I know what layouts I'm using, things like that, I tend to cut everything first and then put things together, do an assembly line. So still quick and easy, right? Okay, now we are down to our last three pieces of DSP. Um, these were from that strip that measured two and three quarter inches by 12 inches. We cut at four inch increments and we're going to use those to make three more cards. So with this 12 by 12 one sheet wonder, I'm using four different layouts or card sketches as I call them. And you make a total of eight cards. So next thing I'm gonna do is put the white pieces on the inside. Another reminder that if you want to add a stamped image or sentiment to the inside of your card, I'm going to suggest that you stamp before you adhere this piece to the inside. Oops. Our other five cards that we made are vertical cards, but these cards um, can be either horizontal or vertical, but I'm going to make three horizontal cards with these pieces. So again, these are two and three quarters by four inches. So then I've cut some Blackberry Bliss cardstock that measures three inches by four and a quarter inches. Three inches by four and a quarter on that Blackberry Bliss. Of course, this Zinnia paper is so pretty and so colorful. You could um, come up with several different color combinations to use with these cards. Maybe the pumpkin pie and old olive, um, the flirty flamingo, and I believe that's mossy meadow. 
You can do all kinds of things. So it's, it's fun to mix and match colors. And then I'm going to adhere these to the center of each of my card fronts using Stampin' Dimensionals. And I'm just going to snip, snip, snip. Don't throw those edges of your dimensionals away. Ooh, that's such a waste. It would break my heart. When I first started um, doing classes way back in the day, I don't know, 13 years ago or something, um, people were using, uh, they didn't bring their own adhesives at that time. Um, I would have them out on my table. And then I was cleaning up towards the end of a class and I had these little metal pails on each table for trash, scraps, that sort of thing. And in one of them was a full sheet of, um, a full dimensional sheet with all of the border of dimensionals in there. Oh, I thought I had a heart attack. I was like, no, 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 people. You know, when you try to be nice. But geez, I was like, oh, no, 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 we can't do this. And I, I laughingly said, if we always throw that away, we're throwing money away. How am I going to buy more stamps to share with you if if we're throwing all that money away? <laughs> and they quickly got it and everybody understood and we laughed about it. But yeah, I thought, oh my gosh, you know, literally I thought I was going to have a stamper's heart attack right there. And that's nothing to joke about. But we made light of the situation, made it work, and uh, never happened again. Imagine that. <laughs> And if you're like me, you go through oodles and noodles and noodles of Stampin' Dimensionals. It's the only item number of a Stampin' Up! product that I know by heart. 104430. Because it seems like I'm always adding that, you know, if I need to get to another level or whatever for an order. I just add a pack of dimensionals, 104430. Don't dare run out of dimensionals, Mary. I should do that on some given day. Just go to my stash of dimensionals and see how many packs are in there. All right. So again, these cards, any of these cards really can be horizontal or vertical because my DSP is non-directional. If I was using a directional paper, um, that too would dictate the direction of each of the cards, but easy enough to work with. Okay, so for the sentiments on this one, I'm using Thank You So Much. Again, another sentiment from the Simply Zinnia bundle. Oh, I'm going to punch these ahead of time. Less chance of me smearing that ink. Oh, not sure what I did there. Didn't have that in evenly, apparently. Let me see if I can fix it up. Maybe. I might just have to cut a new piece. Let's see what happens. Okay, that's better. That's better. And I'm going to do the same. So here, again, using the banners pick a punch, but I'm using the top punch. So instead of getting that banter banner cut, I'm getting a pointed cut on each end. And then I'm ready to stamp. Stamp, thank you so much. I'm 
that wasn't real straight, was it? I'm going to re-stamp this one. I'm going to flip it over. It's always harder for me to stamp, especially when I'm trying to stamp straight, because I'm trying to look over the top without getting my head in the in the frame, the viewing frame. Okay, that's better. And again, I'm going to just add some dimensionals to the back of these. I'm also going to offset the sentiment for these three cards, meaning they're probably not going to be where you would expect them to go. Oh, this needs a slight trim right here. It still isn't quite right. I must not have been holding that or not have inserted that cardstock properly in the punch. Definitely use your air. Don't blame it on the punch. <laughs> okay, and so I'm going in the middle, but towards the left side. And I'll be putting some embellishments here, but just changing things up. Um, if you don't like that placement of the sentiment, I'm not at all offended. You do it your way. But I do like to change things up and try some new things at times. And sometimes just a small change is kind of fun, like this. If you didn't or don't like it there, where might you put it? You might put it right in the center. You might put it in the lower right corner. You might even go off of the layers a tiny bit. I think that looks pretty cool as well. So again, try different ways. And don't ever feel you have to do something exactly like the person um, who showed it to you. Feel free to put your own spin on things, okay? You got the basic layout. Feel free to do your own, own thing the rest of the way. Okay, let's put some of this away. I'm gonna grab my Take your pick tool and let's add some embellishments to all of these cards. Where am I? Here's the others. Okay. So um, these are the adhesive back shiny sequins. You can see I used a lot of this pack, so I've got another one here. Okay. Um, and really, all of these colors work with this DSP. These are not available to order right now, but they are coming back. All right, you will see them again. So just be patient and hold on. The Zinnia paper, as well as the Simply Zinnia bundle um, and embossing folder are all available. The only thing in the suite that's not is the shiny sequins. So I guess we'll just go in order of how we made the cards. Um, let's see. For this one, I think I'll use some green. I'm going to put one here and there and right here. Okay. So three. And you know that we typically work in odd numbers when we're adding um, embellishments. Now here I'm gonna add a little bit more just because I feel like I have more space to do that with um, the one print looking like more of a background, if that makes sense. So I'm actually going to add five 
sequence. So a large, oops, a large and two small there. And then in the bottom or below the sentiment, I'm gonna do a large and a small, right? And then I'm going to do the same five, but this time, and I'm, I'm looking at above and below the sentiment. So on this one, below the sentiment, there's more room. So I'm going to do a large and two small sequence. And then on the top, I'll do one large and one small. And there's my five. Remember, when we're adding embellishments, we're typically working with um, odd numbers. Oh, yes, Tony. Riley is so gifted. I've got her crafting and card making already, right? Oh, wouldn't she love that? She's so funny. I had those things on the floor upstairs yesterday to take pictures, and she's very mobile now, and she's very fast. And with my back and everything lately, I tell you, sometimes she gets to the things before I am, and I've been learning, you know, don't leave anything on the floor, but she happened to be coming before I got my work cleaned up. I was sitting in my recliner working, and as I was doing things, I would just drop it on the floor. But she's so funny. She's so funny. Um, yeah, but I thought that was just a darling picture yesterday. If you don't know what I'm referring to, I put a picture of Riley on yesterday, and you can see the cards and some of the um, supplies I was getting ready for today's Facebook Live, and her face is so funny. So I just put posted the picture, and I put... Um, caption this, and I've had so much fun reading through there, seeing what um, what people are posting, what they're coming up with as far as the various captions. Cracks me up. My family always enjoys seeing those th things as well, how people respond to the different um, pictures of Riley. She's very entertaining, very entertaining, I'll say. Um, shows a lot of personality. Okay, so there's those two cards. And then here, I'm going to put one on each end of the banner. And let me see, I might do some different colors. Um, um, this one, there's some of that pumpkin pie color showing and the flowers on the left. So I'm going to do these. And then I think I will go for the pinks again for the next one. And on this one, um, I think I'll go for, I don't know if I like that, really like, oh, that's okay, that yellow, that's all right. I love the green, and I only have small ones left on this sheet, but I'm going for it, because I love that green. All right, my friends. Okay, once again, here are the eight cards, okay? There's the eight cards made from a single sheet of um, zinnia. What's it called? Flowering zinnia. Flowering zinnias DSP. One 12 by 12 sheet of flowering zinnias DSP. If you weren't on with me at the very beginning, you'll want to go back and re-watch the video so you know how to cut your DSP for each of the cards. And then as I made each set of cards, um, I did share all of the dimensions of the additional cardstock pieces with you. So everything you need to make these or to um, maybe replicate them in your own DSP, own favorite DSPs, whatever you need. Maybe you need masculine cards 
and a one sheet wonder can help you build up your stash of ma masculine cards. Um, anyways, um, everything you need to do this is right here in this demonstration. If you are more of a paper person like I am, I will be posting a complete tutorial with the One Sheet Wonder template. The And Andrea does a great job of making the templates and card sketches for me. They're real easy to read. Um, DSP is always in kind of a um, greenish color, like I'll say a mint macaron color. Um, but anyway, she does a great job. So you get the 12 by 12 One Sheet Wonder template. You'll get the four different card sketches, okay? And then you will get a supply list, color photos of all of the cards, and directions to make all of the cards. That will be on stampinpeace.com in just a little bit. The tutorial is $18, or if... Um, you know you're going to be placing an order with me this month. Um, you order $50 in product or more at any time during this month, even if it's April 1st, 2nd, or 3rd, because today is the 4th, but any time during April, and I will send that um, PDF tutorial with the templates and card sketches, everything, to you free. It will come to you by email. All righty. Any questions about what you saw today? Oh, Noreen, thank you so much. I just read your comment and gosh, it makes me teary. Tears of happiness. Thank you. That means so much to me. Um, I want to say I missed a did I miss a question back here somewhere? Oh, Carol, I agree. Wouldn't that be a great commercial for Stampin' Up? I thought I missed a question. Maybe I didn't. Hmm. Okay, maybe not. I will. Jen, I think I answered your question about cutting... Um, the strips and the card, colored cardstock ahead of time. Yes, to me, it just makes it easier if I know what layouts I'm using, okay? All right, everybody, who would like to win some cards? How about I will give away one from each sketch? We'll do it that way. There were four card sketches I used. So I will give away these four cards. If you would like to have your name put into the drawing to receive one of these cards, please type in the comments now, April One Sheet Wonder. April One Sheet Wonder. And again, in case you missed the very beginning of this demonstration, um, this is something I will be doing the first Thursday of every month. Um, and now that I think about it, I'm going to be gone on this Stampin' Up! Incentive trip the first Monday or first Thursday of May. So I will put that out in a video instead of doing a live demonstration. Hmm, glad I thought about that now. I have a lot of things coming up in the next few weeks that I really need to, to do and get organized with. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for participating, your comments, um, your well wishes. I appreciate it all. And thank you for sharing this card making demonstration as well so that others can enjoy some creative time along with us. Have a great evening um, wherever you are. Stay safe. I hope you are safe from weather. Today's still a little crazy in central Ohio. Nothing severe, but um, just crazy weather. It's like if I see the sun shining for a little bit, I hurry and run out. Um, and wondering if glue goes bad. Um, I hurry and uh, run out and take a quick walk with my back. I can't walk very far, you know. I'm trying to do like a mile, so I'll try to do that twice a day. And today I was getting hit with 
like pellets on my way home, white little pellets um, that like melt and get you all wet and icky. Um, and the wind whipped up. So it's just one of those days. But um, there are some people in the area expecting some bad floods in certain parts. But um, for the most part, the severe weather in central Ohio has calmed down. But I know other places in the country are um, still being affected weather-wise. Okay, the question is, Lori wants to know if glue goes bad. I have never had that experience, Lori. Um, and this is another thing I often add to my um, orders because Tombow, this, um, some people call it the green glue, liquid glue, um, whatever you like, multi-purpose glue. Um, I have a whole batch of this, probably, I would say probably 30 or more of these bottles just because it's another thing that I'll just add on to an order if I want to bump my up, I need to bump my order up by a couple of dollars. And I have never, ever, ever had it gone bad, okay? Um, and the other thing is, if you um, if you have any kind of little container, somebody, um, who gave me this? My Upline's Upline, I believe, gave me this. It was made on a 3D printer. Um, somebody on my team gave me this. Her son made it on a 3D printer. But if you have something, a container, um, I like to store mine this way so that um, <laughs> Jalen's been to my house. She's like, oh, yeah, I've seen her basket of glue. <laughs> You're giving away my secrets, Jalen. Uh, not really. But um, I like to store it this way because then you never get that, um, like that little glob of glue that will dry if you have the tip up. And then you got to squeeze it really hard to get it started because you need to push out that little bit of that little clump of glue. So if you keep it tipped down, that's helpful. Little shot glass, um, a little juice glass, um, small container, anything like that. I do suggest you... Um, Store it that way so that your glue is always ready to come out easily. Um, oh, Jen, you saw it on a previous video of mine. Good, good, good. I'm glad that helps you. All right, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for being a part of my Thursday, April 4th. And I look forward to seeing you next week at 5 p.m. on Tuesday. Have a good weekend, everybody. Happy stamping.